Hi everyone and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide where we're starting off our worldwide Disney adventure throughout 2024 here at Epcot. If you haven't already, make sure you check out our video from yesterday where we reveal we're going to all 12 Disney theme parks around the world. And with Epcot being world based with World Showcase, we thought, you know what, this would be a good place to start the adventure. We have indeed. So while we're here at Epcot, it is actually Festival of the Arts. This is a festival that I've always wanted to see, so I can't wait to see it. I've never seen it before either, and it's very heavily involved with a certain little purple dragon as well. Big <laughs> Looking forward to seeing Figment again. And along with that, there's actually been some changes since it was last here in September 2023. Finally, the centre of the park is no longer all blocked off with construction walls. Well, I mean, there's still a few at the side, but in general, it's all open now. It's World Celebration Gardens, so we're going to check out that. It looks nice in the daytime, but I cannot wait to see it tonight with all the lighting on there. Uh, it looks fantastic. And of course, what's set to be the biggest change since we were last here is the new nighttime spectacular, Luminous launched just a few months ago so we're excited to see that tonight aren't we i cannot wait to see it i love a nighttime spectacular that's something that really sets the disney parks apart you know but uh, come and join us i can't believe it this year all the disney parks in the world and we're starting off here at epcot let's go oh it's so nice and colorful with the sign there's figment with his paintbrush up there as well the rainbow and you got all the nice flowers out the front here at the entrance of the park well, straight away, this feels quite surreal to finally be walking back through the middle of Epcot just here. Welcome to the World Celebration Garden. It's just so nice to see this finished. When I first came in 2019, it was just construction walls everywhere, so I never got to see it before. Yeah, your first time coming to this park without actually seeing it all blocked off in the middle. Now, when I first came in 2014, of course, my first few visits, this looked very different. You had the Fountain of Nations down there in the middle. There was Bill buildings kind of down the right hand side as well uh, that's where the Moana journey of water attraction is now um, but yeah it certainly looks very different I've got to say though it's nice to just see this back open here and all the nice trees lots of seating around lots of flowers and you've also got Dreamers Point just over here oh it's Spaceship Earth just behind it and this new statue of Walt Disney himself which is wonderful I really like the placement of this it looks beautiful and there he is Walt Disney himself at Dreamers Point, yeah, I think that's really nice. I was kind of raised up and looking out over this park, you know. What a great photo opportunity. Yeah, that's the thing. And of course, you know, Epcot was one of the big kind of visions that Walt Disney had. Unfortunately, he never got to see it completed. In fact, he never got to see any of Walt Disney World completed, unfortunately. Um, but I do think it's really nice how they've got a statue of Walt in this park. Well, I've got to say, it is nice to see that view looking back at Spaceship Earth from this angle. Look how green it is, all the nice trees around, all the planting, and I've got to say, I love the soundtrack. I also like how loud it's playing around here. It's very cinematic. Yeah, it's fantastic, all the music. And in the daytime, it looks pretty good around here from what we can see. But at night, from photos and videos I've seen, that looks the part. With all the floor lighting up, it's going to be really nice to see it at night. Yeah, like all this lights up around here. And basically the show that started during the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World on Spaceship Earth. Um, that's kind of been expanded now to all this section here with all the lights around the side, uh, which I'm really excited to see. It's also a place for characters. You've got Pluto just out there as well. And lots of seating all around the side too. It's just so nice to walk through the middle. And yeah, it just feels very cinematic. I like the music a lot. Like, it's great. Pluto! Hey! <laughs> a couple of little uh, food booths by the looks of it have gone in there recently as well. I've not seen those before, so I reckon they're for the next um, event that's going on down here at Epcot, which is going to be the International is it Flower and Garden Festival. Yeah, it is. So they've got the big statues made out of flowers, which is lovely. Yeah, that starts in the next couple of weeks. This is a nice view. Look at that. Beautiful. I do think it misses having a fountain in the middle. I mean, I did love Fountain of Nations. Uh, it would have been great to have had a fountain package, especially for in the daytime. Um, but still, just to have this back open now, uh, it took long enough. It should never have took the best part of, well, over four years for this to be done. So I'm pleased to see it in action, the central part of Epcot. Um, it looks beautiful. Cannot wait to come back and see it at night. And yeah, that's it really. You've got all the seating around the side, the uh, like little charges and things around there. I mean, it looks nice what they've done. I'm pleased with it. I think it's going to grow really nice with all the trees as well, which is great. And yeah, it's got quite a nice energy about it still around here. Quite chilled, uh, but also cinematic. Uh, and then we'll come back and see it at night with all the lighting. 
I'm loving this soundtrack. One day this trip, I'll have to just sit around here for like an hour and just listen to it. Because you know me, I love soundtracks at parks, especially Disney theme parks. Oh, this is really nice, very inspiring as well. It makes you want to get out there and keep on riding. <laughs> yeah, lovely music. Space your purse just there. And you got these kind of metal towers just here. Yeah, don't really have any relevance to the theme and story of Epcot from what I can see. Um, but yeah, they're quite modern structures. It kind of works around here. I like it. I know a lot of people have had different opinions on it. And yeah, I do miss the Fountain of Nations. That's the one thing it really lacks, just having something with a big energy in the middle, a fountain. Um, but you know what? They could always add that back in at some point, uh, take out some of the planter. And even if it's not a massive fountain like the one that was there before, I do think just something in the middle, especially in the daytime, would uh, bring that to life down there. Fountain would be so nice, like a dancing fountain. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Pretty much what was there before. I never saw yeah. it. <laughs> I just over here, this is the one area that's still under construction, um, but it's going to be completed at some point this year. This is going to be Communicore Hall, and I've got to say, I am loving what they're doing with the building just here. It's going to kind of match the style of Spaceship Earth, and this is going to be like a main area for festivals, and there's also going to be a character meet and greet area here as well, with Mickey and Minnie, I believe. So yeah, that's going to be in all of this area. Of course, originally pre-pandemic, there was going to be this huge kind of festival center, two-story building going in here. It all got cut back, um, but you know what? I'm just happy to see this open down here in the middle, and it's nice. Like, look at these views again of Spaceship Earth, views that Charlotte's never seen, you know? Uh, and even for me, it's very different. Like, there used to be a building here on the left side originally and now you've got all the trees it is nice it is a lovely park world celebration gardens and we're going to be starting off down here in the imagination pavilion with journey into imagination with figment and then of course you can now meet figment at the end as well which we're really looking forward to doing again let's go who is this it's figment figment I thought I told you not to interfere. But you've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imaginations. <laughs> From just the sound, your mind has wings. Continuing now, if I may, in a calm, scientific, figment-free manner, the things we see with our eyes can control the eyes of the imagination. Uh, let's begin by using the eye chart to test your vision. One spark of light can light your fancy. Your mind is more than what your eyes see. Your sense of sight. Ooh. Woo! You win one cent. Hey, but don't! Oh, just yeah, really. Imagination works the best when it's set free. You said it, Doc! Imagination is a blast! Figment. <laughs> I'm so 
Stewart is such an icon of Epcot and he has been since the 1980s. It's great to still see him here and you know what, going strong in this park as well. Figment has such a special place in my heart. I adore him so, so much and I got some lovely cuddles from him today. It just really makes it when you come off the attraction being able to meet him at the end as well. Like, it really is fantastic. He's a great character, it really is. And it's always lovely seeing him. No, oh, it's a beautiful day, it really is. And of course, we love Figment to bits and we'd love to see the attraction get the TLC it deserves. You know, it's a modernization, but still keeping that charm that it's got. I'd love to see. And of course, I'd love to have experienced the original back in the 80s. Here's a look then at part of the Festival of the Arts celebration. We're basically doing this big mural so you can take your part in it by painting a little square and then it all turns out to be one massive mural. Yeah, that's a nice thing they're doing for the festival. And with the Flower and Garden Festival only being a couple of weeks away, we started to put out a lot of the features for that now as well. Look at this wonderful topiary of goofy just here. <laughs> I love Epcot and that's why it's the perfect place to start our 12 Disney parks of 2024. And down here now in the beautiful World Showcase, of course all the countries around the lagoon which always are beautiful to stroll around. And tonight we're going to be watching Luminous which is the new nighttime spectacular that we're really excited to see and that takes place down here on the lagoon itself. I've got to say I love the fact that the setup for this uh, can be brought in um, each afternoon and doesn't block the views obviously with Harmonious and the setup was there permanently as an installation in the middle so it did block all the nice views whereas now as you can see um, they bring out the barges um, as the afternoon goes on and kind of put them all around the middle here which is much nicer. Oh there's so many tote broods that they've put around for the next festival. Tigger just there, Eeyore, Piglet, Winnie the Pooh just over there, they look fantastic. They're nice to see them and there's so many beautiful flowers around throughout Epcot. Oh, we're back here in sunny old England now. I don't think it'd be uh, looking quite like this back home though. It wouldn't be as warm as it is today. It's nice. That's the thing though, as you mentioned so far in the videos, at this time of year you do have to pack a little bit differently, don't you? Yeah, I've got leggings and a t-shirt in my bag for legs. It does drop a lot off in the afternoon. Yeah, it does. Like, like in the evening, like yeah. when the sun goes Late down. afternoon into the evening, it goes a little bit chilly. Yeah, it does. Yeah, nice. I don't want my shorts on, you know. But it's a good time to come because it's a lot less humid. In fact, there's hardly any humidity at all at this time of year. It's really nice. We're actually making our way round to France now to go and see a little rat. This is beautiful, this area as we make our way down towards Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. An almost clone of the version at Disneyland Paris, of course, that opened 10 years ago now in 2014. I always remember the original opening in Paris, that was our opening day. That's going to take you all on Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Love the fountain out the front. One of the most atmospheric ride stations ever, Ratatouille. Beautiful, the music, all the buildings, and the little rats that we're going to be sitting in. Here they come. We're putting some highlights from the ride for you all. Thank you. 
Come on, Ryford, he's there from Ratatouille. I love Ratatouille. And that final scene where it's got like you're in the kitchen, the smells in there were so good today. I actually felt like I was in a kitchen. Yeah, we got quite wet today as well with the sprays, yeah, didn't we? I got quite wet on my hair as well. It is a great track to start, right? I do really enjoy it. And yeah, my favourite scene is definitely going through the fridge with the big fish hanging up and the smells in there. It is absolutely fantastic. Great attraction, that is. I'm going to step back out here into France. And you've got the Skyliner just over there. Of course, that isn't an attraction within Epcot, but it does take you from the back of Epcot, the International Gateway, down to Hollywood Studios and some of the resorts as well. Always fascinates me how fast it goes. Look at the Skyliner go. It's beautiful, this part of Walt Disney World as well. I love it around here. At the Festival of the Arts, you've got all sorts of different art booths all the way around World Showcase. And there's so many to see with some really nice paintings and pictures that you can purchase. We've seen some lovely ones. Lots of park ones, characters, figments got quite a lot as well. So yeah, it's really nice seeing all of those. And again, lots of extra food options and things that are available as well. Entertainment, there we go, he's doing a drawing just over there as well. Was that a painting? I can't tell. Yeah, really nice just to see all these festivals. There's another lovely display just here with all the flowers and the sign for Epcot's International Festival of the Arts 2024. A nice figment again with his paintbrush. <laughs> oh, this is nice. They also do all the chalk arts just down here as well. These are really nice. All the way down on both sides of the walkway. Wow, very talented doing this. Amazing to see. Figment. Oh, I love Figment just down there. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, just to have these views back of Spaceship Earth from down here by World Showcase is amazing. It really is. I'd forgotten just how amazing Spaceship looked from this side. We're in that used to just seeing it close up and round at the front of the park entrance. So nice to see it from a distance again back here without any of the construction walls that are blocking it. It is gorgeous. And that's going to be our next attraction this afternoon here at Epcot. It'll always be one of my favourite attractions out of any Disney park. I adore Spacey Bird so much. It's just the structure of it outside and the fact there's a ride in there and you go all the way up to the top. It's just so well designed. Beautiful. So let's go and take you along on this magnificent attraction, Spacey Bird. An Epcot original. <laughs>
If you love Spaceship Earth, it's a fantastic attraction, it really is. It's about a 15 minute long ride from start to finish, and you've got a mix of really nice animatronics in there, some beautiful set design, and a fantastic soundtrack as well, which is really relaxing. It just tells that story so well throughout all the different scenes as you gradually swirling around and making your way to the top of Spaceship Earth before turning around and coming down backwards. Uh, it's a great ride and one of the most ridden Disney attractions. I love it. We're going to head on to the seas with Nemo and friends just here now. Standby wait of 30 minutes. Last thing we haven't really got a plan today. We're just kind of strolling around, going on what we fancy, looking, of course, on the My Disney Experience app uh, is the best thing to do because you can look around at all of the different wait times around the park. How's that water effect make you feel there? Oh, it doesn't make me feel good, uh, but <laughs> it is quite far away. I've got no chance of that getting onto me. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to make our way on. It's quite a nice little ride, this. some nice use of tech in there as well especially when you actually see the aquarium at the end with Nemo and Dory oh, and so I love Finding Nemo it's one of my favourite films I do love the music in a big blue world <laughs> exit this way into world nature I think we'll go through the Moana walkthrough now so here it is, the entrance to Journey of Water. Good thing is with this, it's not got a queue line or anything set up now. Um, there was a point where you actually needed to make a reservation to come through here uh, and join like a virtual queue. None of that now, you just walk through as it was always intended to be really. So of course it's really nice this, and it exceeded our expectations when we first walked through. Um, but of course you don't want to be queuing up for it. It's a nice thing to stroll through. With this one you touch the strings of water, there we go. It makes the different noises. Full of interactives. <laughs> I like this one just over here, so you can kind of move your arm and the water comes up out of all the rocks just there. Pretty cool. Love the music from Moana. Oh, is the waterfall going to open for me? We'll find out. Hey! Is it going to open for Charlotte? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Raising the waves. I do feel like attractions such as Moana Journey of Water are really important in big theme parks such as any Disney park because they're really nice fillers. You spend a lot of time waiting in queues when you come to Disney. So it's nice to just think, you know, you can have a walk through something like that, especially for the kids as well, all the interactives in there. It's really well themed and it's nicely done. We made our way into the land pavilion now, also here in World Nature, where you've got the living with the land boat ride. That's on 20 minutes down there. So we'll go and give that a go. 
nice bit of a classic here in Epcot. And then Soarin', just off to the left-hand side as well. It's still running the original version, of course, that premiered back in 2001 at Disney California Adventure. And as part of our Disney year, we're gonna be getting back to DCA and Disneyland, so looking forward to that this year, aren't we? I'm so excited. Oh, it'll be lovely getting back to the place where we got engaged. It really is a wonderful resort. So yeah, we're gonna go and do Living With The Land, and then head on to Soarin'. over there for you Charlotte? Lovely, <laughs> If you like coming through all the different conservatories here and seeing lots of the plants, plus a lot of these are served out there across Walt Disney World restaurants. Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. With aquaculture, the fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, Epcot's... Ever since Epcot opened back in 1982, it's always been big on education, and living with the land is an important ride here at Epcot and I do find it quite fascinating. It's always interesting going on at least once a trip whilst we're here at Walt Disney World. It's now time to take flight on Soarin' and like I say we're not going around the world we're just going to be soaring over California again at the moment. I've got to say though I do much prefer around the world than the original however of course we're going to have a ride on here because why not we may as well make the most of it. ride on Soaring Over California, the original version that's still playing right now here in Epcot. And we're not a huge fan of flying theatres, but it's still nice getting on classic Soaring, isn't it? One thing I do like about flying theatres is the smells, and on that one you can smell the oranges, which is lovely. We do like the orange groves going through those. It's always great experiencing it. Back here then now in World Celebration Gardens. This soundtrack is so nice. I cannot wait to see it at night. So of course, stay tuned later on in the vlog. See all of this at night with us for the first time. And also Luminous, the new nighttime spectacular here at Walt Disney World. That we're looking forward to. Look at Buzz Lightyear just over here again, all set up, ready for the Flower and Garden Festival. That was really nice. 
to make our way over here to another dark ride now. We're heading on to Mission Space. So of course with this, you've got two options. You've got the green, which is less intense, or the orange that's more intense. Normally, I always make Charlotte go on the orange, but I think we're gonna go on the green, aren't we? We're gonna go on the green today, because I don't think I've ever done the green one before. I'm pretty sure we no, have when we first, you first came. <laughs> I'm sure we have done, but yeah, much quieter this afternoon. Five minutes for green, 15 there um, for orange. And of course, you can go Earth or Mars. So we're gonna to go to Earth today. Before you decide if it's right for you, let me introduce you to the spacecraft. The X2 space shuttle is powered by solid hydrogen and can accelerate from zero to 6,000 in 60 seconds. So we can... Here we go, we go for launch. Ready, Charlotte? Yeah. I'm the pilot. We're off. So yeah, there's four seats in one of these. Mission control, the tower is clear. And everyone gets They're their own roll. Mission control to X2. You are go and throttle up. Back on X2. Pilot, initiate first stage <laughs> separation now. So as we come on the green mission, we're having a flight just around the Earth instead of that mission to Mars. So yeah, it's been a bit different. different as well, it's a lot more calm. And to the left is the Nile River, snaking its way toward Cairo and the Mediterranean. You should be seeing Greece and Italy. And up ahead, Paris, a city of light. Rocket fired. Engineer, extend wings for gliding. Now. right there on Mission Space Green and it is good how they offer the two different versions on there isn't it? I like that, it's nice to see a different one, sometimes the orange is just way too intense for me so the green is just right. The rightism does spin a lot faster on the orange than the green. <laughs> feel it on your face like pulling you back. I do feel like though there's just not as much interaction on the green you know. There's not enough like button pressing on there but the orange, it was still really good but the orange is the better one. Yeah it definitely is even though it might be too intense for you sometimes <laughs> it is definitely the better experience. If you you're waiting a long time for it uh, then yeah you definitely want to make sure you're doing the more intense orange but still good to get on there it's very interactive though like a great immersive experience that ride uh, I do really like it and it fits in really well here in Epcot I think we're probably going to hit up test track next next door uh, because yeah you've got a single rider on there that you can really make the most of so we're going to go and give that a go it's one of the most efficient single rider queues because of course it's six passengers in each car and of course, Test Track is going to be closing for reimagining at some point in the near future. It was announced, so I look forward to seeing what they're going to do with that. But still, I do like the experience on here. Let's go and join the single rider. It's always the better option. And you can still design your vehicle here in the single rider queue as well. Just not as much detail as what you do, of course, if you wait in the main queue. Getting ready for that? Yeah, I reckon that's the design. Let's go to the vehicle testing. Wait about 15 minutes in single rider. And here we go on test track. Let's go on road.
performance data acquired. There we go. Of course. <laughs> Let's see how your designs hold up. Commencing sim car off road and extreme weather sequence. Lightning bolt. Capability test results displayed and verified. Now let's well, see how many vehicles can go and come to their efficiency. Oh, very smoky in here today. Still broke. Sixty-four point nine miles per hour. <laughs> All right, Pierre, we there from a test track, and like I say, he's going to be closing for a much-needed refurbishment, in my opinion. Listen to it go. Yeah, enjoy it. I love test track. It is so much fun. I love seeing other people's reactions on there that haven't been on before. The guy next to me was like, "I've lost my wig just for a bit of a laugh." I don't know if you heard it in the footage. That was quite funny. Uh, but it is a great ride. I do love the ride system, but I just feel like it could be so much more with the theming and the experience on there. More special effects, more things to see. Uh, so hopefully that's what we're going to see with this reimagining of the attraction. I'd love to have done the original. Back in the day. Uh, so I'm really hoping it's more like that, but also still have lots more going on on there. Because it's got so much potential, that ride. Oh, there goes the monorail here in Epcot. Beautiful. Always love having plenty of rides on the monorail. I'm coming to Walt Disney World, and of course that takes you down to the Transportation and Ticket Center, where you can continue on to the resorts down there, and also as well Magic Kingdom. And I do love how it comes through the park just here as well. So when you're making that journey from Transportation and Ticket Center, um, you do this loop round through the park, where you can see World Showcase, and in this way as well, uh, which is beautiful, isn't it? I've done a quick change act. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time to drop now, isn't it, temperature? Yeah, I've got my leggings and my t-shirt on for this evening. You need it, like earlier yeah. in the day, like it's really warm, it's shorts weather than at night it does start going cooler not for everyone but for us we just get a little bit chilly at night so uh, i've got my jeans again to put on later as well look at these lovely floral displays like it's gorgeous it's kind of like the mix between the two festivals at the moment you know because of course flower and garden starts in a couple of weeks still got festival of the arts on now so it's kind of nice to see these events for the first time for us lovely to see 
all the floral displays because we just don't get this in September. Now the good news is we've managed to get our virtual queue um, for the one and only Guardians of the Galaxy. I hope we get September as our song. I want it so bad. That's the thing though with Cosmic Rewind. Great coaster but you still, even though it's been open for a couple of years, got to make a reservation. Um, it is free to do but of course it's still look at the draw uh, if you're going to get it or not without of course paying for a lightning lane. Um, but we've got one anyway which is I great. I'm so pleased because I love this ride. Yeah we got one of them uh, earlier on. Of course you've got two opportunities. One at 7am. Second one you've got to be in the park itself uh, and that's at 1pm. So we got one at 1 o'clock which was a few hours ago uh, waiting, counting down for our boarding group. It was like 300 minutes or something like that. We got like 45 minutes so yeah not too long until that'll be called and then you get an hour to go back. But I think in the meantime we're going to head down in to World Showcase. Now I love nighttime spectaculars and shows at theme parks and I'm really excited to see Luminous, the symphony of us for the first time tonight. And here's a setup down in World Showcase Lagoon. So as I mentioned earlier on, the barges can all be moved in now. And of course it doesn't obstruct the views. And to be honest, even when they're in place now, they're much smaller than those for Harmonious. So it doesn't take away from the lagoon at all. Uh, so I'm really pleased with that. I think it looks fantastic. Of course, you've still got the classic illumination torches in around the side. They're used as well with the flames later on. And yeah, the setup looks great. So you've got fountains, you've got lighting on there, all the pyro, and then along with the main barges, you've got these smaller ones that are all around the edge as well. Really excited to see this tonight. It only launched a couple of months ago, back in December 2023. It's luminous, the symphony of us. It's coming up at the end of tonight's vlog. Really excited to see it. Oh, it's always busy around World Showcase, but you know what, it has a great atmosphere. I love it. And we're around here now in Norway to go and experience Frozen Ever After. Of course, this is also now open at Hong Kong Disneyland. So we're going to be experiencing that as part of our huge Disney year on the channel. And also it is going to be opening at Disneyland Paris at some point in the future. It's still under construction. Has been for a while now. Frozen fan, I really 
enjoy Frozen Ever After. Fantastic dark ride, love all the animatronics, the theming on there. And it got quite wet actually today as well. I didn't get too wet, but my favourite scene in there is Olaf walking across the snow. It's just so cute. That is great. And I think for me as well, I love it when you're in Elsa's Ice Palace. Of course, the boat is pushed down backwards and that's great down the drop with all the lighting. And yeah, it's just so powerful, that scene in the attraction there as well. Well, of course, we are entering into the evening now. Very excited for World Showcase. I'll walk around the pavilions tonight. Bit of a tradition. Love doing it, especially on an evening. Uh, just walking around World Showcase. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It is so nice. I like going into all the little shops. Hey, well, we're going to head down this way now to the Mexico Pavilion, do the dark ride in there. And then, of course, we're making our way for our callback for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewinds. Yeah, our boarding group is getting closer. And let's go make our way inside the pavilion for the Grand Fiesta Tour boat cruise just here. Of course, starring the three Caballeros just there. Lovely in here, and there's a nice restaurant down by the water, which is perfect. Fountain, all the little shops. That's what I love about World Showcase. Nowhere quite like it, and of course, all the cast members around World Showcase are from them respective countries as well, which is amazing. You're here in Mexico, everyone's Mexican. You go over to Norway, everyone's Norwegian. I love that. It's a really nice touch. Nowhere quite like it. About a 15 minute wait, so not too bad. There's that lovely restaurant. appreciated ride that in my opinion while well worth having a ride on when you come here to Epcot at Walt Disney World the good news is we have been called for our time on Cosmic Rewind please let us get September hey. <laughs> let's go make our way up there I'm just really happy to be getting on this awesome indoor coaster again let's go up to Guardians and here it is the show building for Guardians of the Galaxy and of course, this is mostly just the queue and the pre-shows in here. The ride goes into a massive building around at the side just there. Manufactured by Vekoma, this ride. And yeah, it is a spinning style coaster. It doesn't really spin that fast. It more spins into the seams as you're making your way around. You've got an awesome backwards launch on here as well. It's a brilliant coaster. I'm really excited to get back on it. Oh, look at Spaceship Earth over there. which we and countless others share. For you to travel to Xandar would take two and a half million years, assuming you had a ship that could fly at the speed of light. So we decided to come to you. But even we could not have reached you so easily were it not for the cosmic generator, an advanced piece of Xandarian technology that creates jump points artificial tunnels that act as shortcuts, linking distant points in space. There is no cause for alarm. Turn off that alarm. I've got an important transmission coming in. Hey, what's up, Nova 4? Our cosmic generator has been stolen. What? How? What did we think of that? That thing's gotta be worth a fortune. <laughs> I am rude. I'm gonna cost you. Yeah, who do you think took okay. it? Perhaps that really big man outside your ship. Oh, that is a big man. I need to alert Nova Prime. I have been watching Terrans from the Odds. That's not good, Gail. This species has failed. Wait, what? And here we are then down in the awesome 
awesome station. Dual loading as well. Station on this side and one on the other side, and of course some of the best trains in the business. On this as well, all the theming. Excited to get back on Charlotte. So excited, I love it. <laughs> it's going to take you along on Cosmic Rewind. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. It is a really good fun indoor roller coaster. In fact, the longest indoor coaster in the world. I love that coaster so much. We didn't get September, we didn't get the best song, but that coaster is just fantastic. I just want to keep going round and round on it. It's the backwards launch that's the highlight for me, you know, so on there. Good. I love it. Yeah, and the layout is quite basic, but you wouldn't tell when you're going round on there. Like, it's a very good fun ride, it so really is. Much fun. I wish there was a lot more theming to look at instead of just the projections, though. But that's just me. I like practical sets over projections. I just love it. I've recently just watched all the Guardians of the Galaxy films, so I've got all the references in there, which is great. Oh, it's always really good getting back on there. And we've stepped outside. Look at the beautiful spaceship Earth and the World Celebration Gardens. We're going to have a stroll through these now. As someone who used to love the light up fiber optics that they used to have here in Epcot, I'm a big fan of this here in the floor. And look at it at night. Like, it really comes alive, this in the dark. And there's Dreamers Point. Oh, all the lights in the trees as well. I mean, they've done a brilliant job with this at night. Look at it. Wow. The lighting package here in the floor and all around the sides is amazing. It's like stepping into a movie. I love how loud the music is. Like I said earlier on, it's got that power about it. This just feels so Epcot, it really does. I love it to bits at night. And it's them lights as well that they did for the 50th on Spaceship Earth. They just brought it together. Look at it. It's like being in this like futuristic movie standing here. Wow. Epcot. I love how it's all perfectly synced up as well, all the way from the top, all the lights at the side and then in the floor. Yeah, this is wonderful, really nice at night. Perfect timing. Yeah, the show just kind of runs every so often. You can watch it from here in the gardens or on the other side as well. Or well, pretty much anywhere you can see Spaceship Earth. But yeah, really impressed with this at night. It's lovely. Oh, it's lovely just standing here, soaking up the atmosphere in the heart of Epcot. So yeah, it's a thumbs up from me for this at night round here. A bit more energy in the daytime, possibly a small fountain in the middle. But other than that, at night, yeah, it's incredible. You've got all these little lights down at the side as well. 
Yeah, well done with this one, Disney. It shouldn't have took as long as it did, but it's nice to have it back. It's lovely. So we've got just over an hour to go until Luminous. Very excited to watch that tonight, that new nighttime spectacular. We're having a stroll now around World Showcase. Now, normally we spend a lot more time in World Showcase, but of course, we focused a lot of time on the attractions today because we're actually planning on coming back and doing a full tour around World Showcase, oh, uh, which we've never done before on the channel. So that'll be really exciting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try and find the World Showcase passport, if they still do it, and take it around each pavilion game sign but we're struggling to find it yeah even if they don't do that though we're going to do a full detailed tour of each pavilion because uh, normally i'll always tie it into a full epcot vlog and there's so much to see around here and lots of things that charlotte hasn't yeah, even seen a lot that i haven't seen so it'd be really nice to see it yeah so we're going to have a full world showcase vlog coming up so stay tuned for that at some point in the next couple of weeks during our trip here to florida and because of Festival of the Arts, they've got so many of these little booths all the way around World Showcase with some really nice Disney pictures. Like, they're fantastic, some of these. Yeah, there's probably about 20, maybe even 30 of these tents all the way around. There's so many. The Festival of the Arts 2024 always runs at this time of year. It's walking through Morocco just here, and we're going to be watching Luminous from the Italy Pavilion, just on the little bridge directly opposite where I used to watch Illuminations actually. I've heard this is a really good spot to watch Luminous. So of course we'll let you know our thoughts on that tonight. We're yeah, really excited to kind of delve a bit deeper into World Showcase in a future video. You know, 10 years of coming here to Walt Disney World with it being our big Disney year as well. I thought, you know, let's do a full detailed tour. We'll talk more about the shops, the restaurants, and also as well, some of the other little experiences that there is all the way around. Because of course you walk around the lake, but you start going into all these pavilions and there's so much to see. You wouldn't necessarily find or see at first. I cannot wait to get back to Japan as part of our Asia trip that's gonna be coming up this year. And of course, we've been planning this for quite some time, so it's so nice to be able to talk about it now that we're going to be doing all these Disney parks around the world and so much more that's going to be coming up throughout our travels. We are going to be back in Japan for my first time since 2017 and also Charlotte's first ever time, Tokyo Disney Resort. Right past the American Avenger here as well. And that's a show that I've not seen for a long time in there. So yeah, we'll definitely check that out when we do our World Showcase tour. Oh, I do love seeing all the bubbles. Add to the magic. Basically, you get a free bubble show if you walk behind someone who's got a bubble wand. <laughs> Still got them bubbles following us down here into Italy. And yeah, this is where we're going to be watching Luminous from tonight. The Italy Pavilion, just off to the left. It is beautiful there, honestly. Been here loads. But yeah, just walking around World Showcase is so special. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna pop to the restroom and then we'll get in position. Just under 40 minutes to go until tonight's show. First time seeing this for us, the new nighttime spectacular. 30 minutes to go until showtime. We're in our position here around the lagoon and the torches have all just come on around the side as well. Really adds to the atmosphere. There's something about just standing here waiting for a nighttime show with all the torches on around the edge of the lagoon. And I'm very excited for this, so we'll put in some highlights over the next few minutes and we'll share our thoughts on Luminous.
draw noise. Cradled in tenderness, we tune ourselves to the world around us. Thank you. 
sing out so others can hear you. there from Luminous, the Symphony of Us. And I've got to say, I really enjoyed that nighttime spectacular. I'd seen videos of it online, you know, since it started in December, and I thought it looked really good. The soundtrack I really liked, and seeing it in person, I enjoyed it even more than I was expecting. I thought that was a great show, and it fits in Epcot really nicely. That was such a beautiful show. I was stood there tearing up. The original music made it so, so good. The fireworks were great. Oh, I just loved it. 
And that's the thing, it's the soundtrack and the original music that really pulled it together. And straight away from the stars, I love that going around all the different countries, the fireworks coming in, saying like, welcome, benvenidos. Like, I loved all that, that was fantastic. And really tied it into Epcot. Yes, of course, you had your reference to the Disney films in there, um, but it was done so well. And with a storyline throughout, there was a proper narrative throughout the whole show that carried it together. And that section about sadness and loss, oh, honestly, I was tearing up because everybody can relate to that at times in the life. Um, so you know what, I thought that was a great show. It's certainly my second favorite show I've ever seen here in Epcot. Illumination is still put at the top, but that is certainly a worthy replacement. And I couldn't say the same about Harmonious or Epcot Forever. I know Epcot Forever was only the placeholder, um, but for me, this is a great show. I hope it sticks around for many years. I think the lighting package and the fountains on the barges is just as impressive as Harmonious, and it's much smaller and not intrusive in the daytime. It's a winning show, I really enjoyed it. I want to watch it quite a few times whilst we're down here. And that's a sign for me, it got to the end and I said, you know, this is the one, this is the one that I want to see again. Uh, I'd actually prefer it myself to Happily Ever After, I think. Uh, it's my favorite nighttime spectacular currently running here. And it's a brilliant show. I really enjoyed that a lot, Luminous. Uh, now in terms of our day here, we've had a brilliant time, haven't we? We have had such a good day today, gone all the attractions and also met the main man himself, Figment. We love seeing Figment, <laughs> honestly. And at the end, actually, they've got a special like ballad version so nice. of one little spark that plays like after the show. Um, but yeah, it's been great getting all the attractions today. Really enjoyed that. There's some brilliant rides here in this park, some great theming, and just the overall experience. World Celebration Gardens, again, nice in the daytime. A nice chilled area. Missed a bit of energy and Disney atmosphere, I think, in the daytime. But at night, it's gorgeous with all the lighting. Uh, and like walking back throughout there tonight now, instead of past <laughs> loads of construction walls, um, <laughs> will be fantastic. Uh, well, what a way to start off our Disney year here in our first Disney Park Vlog of the Year, of course, from Epcot. Yay. With 11 more parts to go, Charlotte. I'm so excited. Including three here at Walt Disney World. But we will be back in Epcot later this trip because uh, we're going to do that special World Showcase video. So stay tuned for that coming up. But that was brilliant tonight. I loved Luminous so much. Let me know your thoughts down below in the video comments. Uh, are you an Illuminations hardcore fan mm -hmm. like me? You know what? I'm pleased with that. I think it's a really good show. That leaves us with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. See you in the next video. Thank you.